can't. Twice I've banged my head on that. <laughs> when you're laughing. Mm. Oh, it's a new day. It's a new week. Yeah. I can't work out whether it's cold or whether it's warm. I don't know. It was warm yesterday. No, we're on about today, the new week. It's mild, isn't it? Right, new week starting off. Ow. That's what. What right. that be? I don't know. I'll have to chat about it in a minute. Um, oh, that's nice and cold. So, I've started on the Bailey. Um, I've had everything running. I've got the fridge on the gas. I've had the heating on earlier on on the gas. I've got my hot water that's really warm. Um, my battery charge is doing what it should be doing. That's charging all up. And I'll show you this a sec. Um, My waist level, the ass, because I've used a bit of water. Right, get yourself outside, Em. Yeah. And pop your head through that door outside, and I'll show you something interesting. Here is the fresh water tank. Yeah. Um, there's your adjuster for the pump. The pump's actually a submersible pump, which goes in there. Now, we've had a few of these Adamos. When you fill them up full, they leak out the top here. Right. When they're filled full. And what they've done is because the level, level sensor is set at 100% at the top. So what we do is we check where the 100% is. And the 100% is about that far off the top. So it gives people time to switch it off. But it is quite a common fault. So I did fill it up, waited till it got 100%, turned the water off. And that's set right how I'm happy with and how I want to. But we have had a problem with a few before where we filled them up and then they've come out there because they weren't calibrated right. Um, so that's what we've noticed on some of these Adamos. So I'm happy with that. So there's a little tip for you on that. Where's she gone? Around here. Oh, you're coming the other way. Why'd you take the longest journey? I don't know. Journey? <laughs> what did you right, want to Right, I've got the bridge on the gas. I'll just quickly show you. There's the gas going up to there and on the other blogs, we had problems before with the, on the electric quantity. Can you just see in there, there's the flame going. You'll have to go down and up. There, just see the flame. Got a nice blue flame there. That's all working well. Um, I'll put that back on again now. Is that what you're supposed to do out here? The That's the spiral there, but what I will do later, I will get the airline out and give it a good blow, get any dirt or anything like that. So. That's my day on the Monday. Everything so far is going to plan. Shh. Now you're going to find some wood. You're going to touch the woods. Eh? Hey? Oh, touch wood. Yeah. yeah. Touch wood. Everything's going to plan. So I'll see you a bit later while I crack on with the Bailey. All right. Today has been an uneventful day for me, which means an uneventful video for you. I shouldn't say that because it's a bad video there, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway. You make it sound like nothing happens. <laughs> well, something does happen because obviously we're doing videos of it. Um, ran all this up on the gas today. Everything's doing what it should be doing. Um, gone through, done all my oil, done my, tuned my radio in, just checking all the lights off. Everything's working. So tomorrow we'll set it up on the electric. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Um, probably have a look at a few vans. But that's me done. I'm going now.
OK, just had a bit of a shunty around. That's all done. Now, bear in mind, I like moving motorhomes around. So we've got ourselves in position to work on the next vans. And I've had the Bailey on all morning on the electric. So let's go have a look and see if it's looking after itself and behaving itself. Is it warm in here? Yeah. It is warm, isn't it? So, we're happy with that. Um, electric. Um, what we're reading there. Five, two, so we're going to knock the um, heating off. Oh, it's not that off. Now we're happy with that. Yeah. Has that gone down? Yeah, that's dropped down. Is it supposed to, to go 500. Down? Yeah, because we've switched the elements off, haven't we? Switched two elements off. But what we're going to do now is we're going to get some hot, 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 hot water. And wait for a year to click. And that's the Truma heating. Those are the seats. Is it? You just put it in there. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear it? Yeah. Near the click? There's a trimmer heater. Yeah. There. So we're cutting counts then. Yeah. Cutting counts, I'm on three. Three. What? The amount of times I've hit my head on that. Ah. Uh. <laughs> so I'm on three at the moment. Was that all yesterday or...? That was yesterday, yeah. None today, right? None today. I'm lucky at the moment today. Oh, that's cold. That is cold. Minus 29. Oh, that does get cold. That's really cold. I like that. I've run for a bit longer. Let's make it to that minus 29. And we're happy with the fridge. We've got the water all on. Yeah. Is it hot? Pardon? You need to check if it's hot, don't you? No, I want to just put the hot water on. I had the heated on this How morning. How long does it take for the hot oh. water to get hot? Right, it'll always get quicker on the gas. So if you can imagine the hot water system, imagine a kettle. So if we plug it in, yeah. that's on the electric, so the element warms up the water, which will take a bit longer. Now, if we have it on the gas, what we're doing then is we're putting the kettle... Oh, I'm not putting the gas on, have I? I'm putting the, hot, the kettle on top of the gas yeah. and then that warms it, boils it, so it will get warmer. Roughly 20 minutes, I would have thought, on the electric, just got a bit quicker. 20 minutes? That's a yeah. long time, isn't it? Now, the problem is, right, you youngins of today, we are used to, on a Sunday night, we used to have one bath a week and we used to have to go upstairs and put the immersion heater on yeah. and then wait for the water to warm up. And then if there's a few of you in the household, the water had only warmed Each so time much up. Have to wait for it to heat up. Or we could only use the amount of water we've got. So you used to lie in your bath, and as the water's getting cold, you used to shake it to get warmer. <laughs> then we're in the olden days. Now you're spoiled. You've got combi boils where you boilers where you've got instant water, so it gets warm. Yeah. So these motorhomes are a little bit of a throwback because they've got 15 litres of water in. So that's how much you can use when you've warmed your water up. So it's a little bit back at home. Let me know in the comments, anyone else who had a, had a immersion heater that used to switch on in the olden days. I don't remember, to be honest with you. It's only what people have told me. It's only what Kev's told me. I used to have one. An immersion heater? Yeah. Now we're waffling. I had my hot plate on. I did forget about the hot plate yesterday. And I come in, I was like, what's that smell? I can smell burning. And I left the hot plate on. Why Why have they got hot plates? What are the hot plates for? For when you're cooking, so you can no, cook some electric. What's the difference between like... That's gas and, and that's electric. Now you can only use that one when you've got the electric plugged in, basically. Mm. Right, I think we're done in here. Anything else you want to ask before we go? Yeah, I do. Um, what was it like checking this van off? This van has been quite a good little van to actually do, to be honest. There isn't an awful lot on the van. Um, because all we've got, if you think about it, we've got the drop-down bed. Yeah. Um, nice, easy controls. 
basically yeah. and then the heating and hot water system is the Truma system and with this fan because it's quite a wide fan as well it's quite a big fan they're easier to check off the only things I have to keep my eye on is I've been checking on so if you see the tap here we yeah. can't get at the pipes there I have to put my hand in and have a feel around but also on the cassette toilet outside might as well have a look can't we so to keep an eye on it is can you see the pipes around there bottom cold water going up to the sink um so how come they're in there what do you mean how come they're in there like they're usually in a cassette toilet no it's just how it's designed isn't it that's all it's just basically how how the motor has been designed so that's one thing i'm keeping an eye on um, it's quite easy to see the pipes in here as well big, big cupboard yeah big cupboard um i can't see anything there but also i'm keeping out for any water or anything or listening out for the pump i've got this up so i can keep an eye on my pump as well but it's been quite yeah it's it's not a difficult fan really um, what else have I had troubles with? I mean, I've got a little list of it, a dog. Oh, little door fly screen. Yeah. Let's see if it's worked. What? What is it? What's well, fine. Ah, yes. See here, all this was wrinkled. Right. You can see a little bit there. So I actually straightened each one out and then slowly, I'm going to put that back again, close it yeah. into position. Plus also that this bottom of the leg was out out of the um, runner as well so I put that one in so got that one going um, oh bottom of the ladder so this is my ladder yeah yeah I did notice under further inspection there's no um, little Stop rubbers it. on there so anybody putting that on there it could scratch it, that's it yeah so I'll put it that way and I'll go on the hunt for some rubbers um, I need diesel in, I've just been, we never like a van going out with no diesel in, so we always make sure there's a minimum of a quarter in, and this was just below a quarter, so I've been to get some diesel, and, uh, well Steve went to get some diesel, and we'll top that one up as well, um, oh I've got, uh, over the skylight, there's a little knob that you press in, it probably just wants a little bit of WD-40, so I'll get that done. Oh, is it just a bit tough? Yeah. Just, just, so I'll do all of them while I'm there. I'll leave the fridge on now. We've got the hot water on, so you can see now, we've got the hot water on. The reason why it's flashing is because we're not up to temperature. And then what I will do, when I come and check the water, I'll do a, a lot of water through to fill up the waste tank as well, so we can um, make sure everything's holding in there. I have put water in the waste tank and that's okay. Um, but yeah, I haven't got an awful lot to do. I've got to make the bed up. Yeah. I've work out the bed. I've got to do my awning. Um, I've gas tested it as well. And then basically, oh God, just check my power points as well, because I noticed there was a power point in the garage. Just double check the cassette toilet. But other than that, I'm good to go. Oh, that's all right, right there. So, oh, off you go. What are you doing? What are you doing? You sneaked up on me again, what haven't you? What are you doing? What I'm doing is you have to come around here. Go around this way. You just leaked a bit. I am just checking the scuttle where all the water runs down isn't blocked of any leaves at all. So the water comes down the windscreen, comes down into the scuttle. Yeah, I'll have to go around there and have a proper look. So as you can see, goes down. Yep. Yeah. You now see, got a few leaves there. Get them leaves out. And then can you see going down there? Yeah. There you go. And it goes out the side of the van down there. See? Oh, okay. So we need to make sure our scuttles are clean. Why? Don't we? Why? because if you get blocked up, then all this will get filled up. And especially on the older vans, pre-2002, they used to drip over onto the gearbox, and that's where you get your crunching in your gear. Mm. So, 
Is that the same for cars as well, is it? Oh, I don't know about cars. Mm. Oh, and guess what? What? Guess what? Ladder's got new. Hey, you managed that? to find some. I pinched one out of another van. Oh. So I pinched the ladder out. So you've got your, your uh, drop down bed, it drops down. And then. Oh! So as you can see here, yeah, if you look, you have to come in. Oh. So a very simple diagram. So you can have the drop bed down right the way down to where the seats are. You can have it up or you can have like a bunk bed, but you can't have it that low. Why? Because it says on the picture. It says on the picture, it says on the picture, doesn't it? Oh, so you've got to have it high enough for your yeah, ladder. Because that's dangerous, isn't it? Somebody trying to get out. You want to go to the toilet True. at night. Get your head. So there's my drop, drop down bed going up. Do you get a lot of problems with electric beds? No, not that many. I'll tell you what you do sometimes get. That's a good question though, is Emily. It's had a light to get on there. Yeah. Go off. Yeah. Sometimes what you do get is there's a little stopper up here. Right. So when it gets to the little, little switch, so when that gets up to the little switch activates and turns the lights on and sometimes um, it moves where it won't activate them so sometimes you just have to adjust a little switch oh. um, but no, it's not, it's not that Have you ever had one wood. get stuck? Bed? Yeah Yeah, and then you have to manually wind them up and down So, there we go, are you ready? Yeah Little sign before was flashing, it's not flashing now Oh, there's a clicking sound. That's the pump. Ow! Yeah, you probably shouldn't be doing that. No, I shouldn't have. 58 degrees, that is. So our hot water, our hot water is working. I'm just going to check my fridge again. Oh, yes. So that one now, we can switch that off. Do you have a preference I... for fridge size when checking out? Do I have a preference for what do you mean? Yeah, like, is there a type of fridge you like to check off more than others? Yes. What? Ones that they aren't broke. Ah. So, this fridge is lovely. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. But if there was, I wouldn't like it. Um, so we'll switch the electric off now. So what we'll do is I'll switch that off now. Um, so there we go. Go to hot. Off. And then the little meter should all be dropped down. And there we go, we're off on the electric, on the hot electric, water. Hot water? Hmm. How come motorhomes have both electric and gas? What do you mean, on the hot water and the heating? Yeah. Well, predominantly, they should be just gas. Because with motorhomes, let's just think what a motorhome or camper van does. It's supposed to be going out in the wild and wild camping away from civilization. So the only way you can do that is through gas. So the original ones were gas, and then as times progressed, we've got campsites and everything else, we've gone to electric as well, because if you're on a campsite, you can put a hookup in, charges the leisure battery, and then also, um, basically, you can only use electric. So obviously, as things have progressed then, the heating system is gas and electric, so you have the option for both. And then that's when they started putting the inductions in, not the inductions, the hot plates, and then also the fridges are gas and electric as well. So, as not as many people now are wild camping, they tend to go to campsites. Um, is that how they've got the electric was added? But mm. the idea of a motor and motor camper van is to wild camp. That's a good question. That was a good question. Any more questions? Um, how come, like, you know, the older camper vans? So that's why they're gas. Just gas, yeah. Just gas. Yeah, and that's why you had a gas fire in them as well because oh. you couldn't have an electric one because in case you didn't have a hookup but they were gas fires then they went to gas and electric fires is it easier to check off when it's gas and electric than I'm, just gas i know because all you've got to do is do the gas haven't you if it's gas and electric you do gas and electric but there isn't many now that you'll come across only really older vans that are just gas only oh. so everything's gas and so electric so it's not a recent thing no um, but what this is why yesterday we were doing the gas 
and then today we've done the electric because I've also done a gas test on it. But if I've checked this off in the morning on the gas and switch over to the electric, this fridge is still cold, isn't it? Yeah. So if I then put it onto electric, it'd be a full sense. So hence why I do gas one day and then the next day I'll do the electric. So it's starting from the zero and getting back up, same as the heating and the hot water. Can you still get fridges which just operate on gas? No. The majority of fridges coming out now are starting to get used in a lot of uh, motorhomes or, or camper vans, especially in camper vans, but they're now going into motorhomes are, I forgot the name of it, compressor fridges. Yeah. So the compressor fridge just runs off the leisure battery and they're really economical because once it hits temperature they switch off. Oh yeah, but the, in motor home and camper van fridges you're not like at home opening the fridge all the time. So it's not always being used and you tend to just keep in there your um, milk, a bit of butter, bacon, things like that. Me with me, health um, drinks and then obviously if it was Kev it'd be his beer. But he'd only get them out at night. No, you get them out every day, wouldn't he? No. So we will be better than electric. <laughs> so yeah, the, a lot of the compressor fridges now are starting, starting to appear in more and more of the motorhomes, that's what I'm finding. I think that's all. Okay. All today's questioning. If you have got any questions, get them in the comments. We can mention them in the vid in the blog that we do. Um, I'm pretty much done on here. I need to put my cassette toilet back in and then I'm going to wrap up the van. Um, what I will do before I do leave, uh, actually we'll do this now, so what I tend to do when I'm not wrapping up the van yeah. is I'm going to switch, I would switch it all off here, but I'm, just to show you, I'm going to turn my pump off, I'm going to open the taps, open, them. open both of them, what about I'll, the I'm going to do it now, I'm going to open the shower. The reason I'm doing that now is I'm taking pressure off the pipes. Will that, are you trying to empty it all out? No, I'm just taking the pressure off the pipes because obviously we, we're primed up. What I mean by primed up is water's at all the pipes. Now we use a lot of plastic and plastic push fits and everything, but I'm just releasing the pressure. So I've released the pressure. I will close these. And the reason why I'll close these so is when I come in the next day and start again, what I tend to do, I forgot I've left them open. They have to come really neat because water's going everywhere. How can... The water's stopped flowing. Because we haven't got the pump on. Oh, okay. So if I turn the pump on now, the pump's gonna, basically we turn it on, the pump on, the pump in the fresh water tank, yeah. pulls the water out, and then takes it to the cold pipe or takes it to the water heater. But because we've turned the pump off now, we've released all the pressure. And then what I'm gonna do now is in winter time, I would drain it fully. But because we're expecting no frost or anything like that. And this is the most awkwardest place in the world. The drain off is down here, the yellow lever. I'm just gonna open that. Five, four, three, two, one. And I've just well, got I'm doing a countdown. I've been dramatic. Oh, okay. You weren't like waiting for something. No, I was just being dramatic. <laughs> so I've just released a little bit of pressure out the water tank as well just in case we had a freak frost or anything like that. So I've just released the pressure on the van. So it's basically, it's just having a little. <sighs> so again, when you're using your motor and we camper van, right, if you're not using the water, just turn the pump off. Because as we've shown you, they're all plastic. If you look along with you, everything is plastic. Plastic pipes, plastic push fits, everything. So now we've just released pressure off the van. So, and again, when you're going to use the water, you're probably going to have a have a wash or a shower, or you're going to do a few pots and pans. So there's no great shakes just putting the pump on, because if you did have a leak and you got the pump on, because then it's leaking out, the pump will keep going, and it'll start to just flood wherever it is. Right. There's a good tip for the day. Is that a good thing? What? Flooding the the camper van. That was the worst question you've ever asked. <laughs> it was bad, wasn't it? That was the worst. <laughs> no, but I meant like, is it good because then you know where the leak is? What? If you were to have a leak, would you? What do you mean? Like, turn your pump on to check where the leak is coming from. Well, you're going to have to, aren't you? Because obviously if there's water over there, then you know the leak's there. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's, a long, hey. it's been a long day. <laughs>
at the end of the day, Emily's are asking the questions that probably a lot of people ask her because we take it for granted. Uh, obviously, that we know quite a bit about the motor road, but some of the questions she asks are really good questions where people probably would think, well, what does he mean by that? What does he mean by that? So hopefully, if one person could just take and go, ah, never thought of that, we've done a job in the video because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. So I've had enough now. I definitely think Emily's had enough. Don't forget to drop your comments and we'll see you tomorrow. We've got another quick question. Do you turn your gas off after having it, like testing it on the gas? What do you mean? Like, you said you tested it on the gas yesterday. I did a gas test, yeah. No, so, like you tested like your fridge and stuff on yeah. the gas. I leave the gas, gas on. I leave the gas on all day, but now I'm locking up. I haven't got the gas on today, but if I had got the gas on, I'd turn the gas off before I'd lock the van up. So. Is it easier to turn off? Turn the gas off? Yeah. Wait, turn, come here, let me show you. So there's the gas bottle. Yeah. There's that. As you can see, that's off at the moment. If I want to switch it on, I can switch it on. But we've switched that off now, so now we've got no gas coming into the motor home. And I wouldn't, it's just me, I wouldn't leave the gas on if I'm not going to be using the gas, so... So if you are, like, not while camping, or whatever, you turn it off? Yeah, if I'm not using the gas, I turn it off. Well, that's just me. So, um, can I go now? Yeah. Well, the sun's shining on the pitch. Lovely sunny day. Look at this. Hey, had a wet weekend, and then we come to this. Let's see. There he is. <laughs> Let's go find Jason. Look at the sunshine. Huh? He'll be here. He'll be sat down somewhere, as usual. Jason. Well, you're not sat down. I said you'd be sat down somewhere, you <laughs> skiving. It's a scarlet pimpernel. He's returned, <laughs> hasn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where have you been hiding? Uh, you weren't in last week. Not in some part. Yeah, but you went there on Thursday, Kev, not Wednesday. I don't care. Uh, Why weren't you last week? Uh, oh, I had a hospital appointment, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. Yeah. So where have you been then? Tell us, tell us. Right, new feature. Kev's Travels, where have you been? Donington Park to the British Touring Cars. Right. But, yep, it was lovely. It was that wet on the Sunday, they couldn't start racing till the afternoon, but uh, highly recommended a good weekend. And you went to your new van, didn't you? I did, huh? yeah. Tell everyone what you've got. I've got the Auto Sleeper Kingdom. The posh auto sleeper. Posh auto sleeper king. And, and, then, I, and I didn't get stuck this time. I didn't have to get towed off. <laughs> all, the, all the others were getting towed off. <laughs> so how did you find your auto sleeper? Great. Great. Are you still right now? Because if, if anybody that doesn't know, and he did have an A-class, yep. a small A-class, but he's now gone to a camper van. So an auto sleeper kingdom is a camper van with a fixed bed. Isn't it? Yeah, but it's, it's still a, quite a big camper van. Uh, Shower room is very small. Uh, got used to the storage, plenty of storage under yeah. the bed. I put a storage box on the back to carry any extra kit that I need when I go for these sort of things, but no, we're getting used to it. And did you have your spot overlooking the track again? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I always do. Uh. And where are you going next week? Next week, Brands Hatch. What's that for? British Touring Cars. Same again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do an overnight stop. I uh, We set off on the Thursday, and there's a nice pub down at... Uh, Brackley, near the Mercedes yeah. headquarters, uh, Stratton Arms, do overnight stops, and we stop there. Book a table, so we have a meal there, so there's no cooking on the Thursday night. Then we head down to Brands Hatch and meet up with some friends who live in Kent. And, and the other half live, eh? And then we have a, a nice boozy weekend watching the racing. OK, fair <laughs> yeah, enough, I'll give you that. It's called retirement, Jason. <laughs> I can recommend it. Right. Go up, what are you going to do now? I'm checking this van off, Kev. Oh, right. So in the blog, I've been hard at work, yeah. checking away. Um, and uh, do you know what? It's nice, quite a nice, easy van to check off because I've got loads of space. Yeah. Have a look here. I know. Nice I've got my tank there. Yeah. It is an inline. It is a good Sorry submersible. Sorry, it's like that. Yeah. Nice washroom. Got a lovely separate shower. Yeah. Well, you basically got a, got a changing room as well, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. 
Off Sunday, Nick. So what we're going to do, we're going to do three videos today, Kev. Right. So let me show you what we're going to do. Let's drop down bed there, Jay. Drop down bed. Drop down bed? Drop down bed. Right, wrong. Enlighten me. Right, where we're up to this week, Kev, is we're checking that one off. That's, that's, a, chunk, that's a chunky looking thing, isn't it? Hobby what? Vanta. Yeah, I could tell you. And because you weren't in last week, I did the review on it. Oh, did you? By oh, myself. By yourself. I'm my lonesome. You think you were multitasking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. What I've got for you. Yep. We're going to do the deathless. Deathless trend. Yeah. They're there, sort of uh, entry level, aren't they? Yeah. Aren't they? Posh fusion. Posh fusion. Posh fusion. That one is. We're going to do that one. And we're going to do the Weinsberg. Well, they're a nice fan. That's a really nice fan. Do you know how many miles that's done, Kev? Come. 300. Oof. Nice satellite dish on the top there. Like that. And do you know the story? Do you want me to tell you the story on it? <laughs> In November, he went out to please his wife. Right. And brought the Weinsberg. Mm -hmm. He drove it home. Yeah. He drove it onto the doorstep. And she said, I'm not ruining that. She yeah. said, I don't like it, I don't like the layout. So, because it's November, he then went to the motor home show with her. She then picked another van. Yeah. So, what's the golden rule, Kev? The moral of this tale. Take, take your wife with you when you're going to choose a van. <laughs> Who buys motor homes, Kev? The wife. Right. What do we do, Kev? We just fork out the money and just say yes dear. and drive yes it. dear yes and drive it yeah and you know a lot of wives drive them as well now well, that's a good point Kev. that's mm, a good yeah. point yeah we can't be uh... okay. so we know the rules now what yeah. do we do we go it's right here <laughs> <laughs> well no it is i mean we get people coming here looking at vans and we we do say if you're gonna buy a van you've never had a van before Sit in as many as you can, try them out, and make sure you buy the correct layout. Do you know the thing, Kev? No. Women are practical, we aren't. No. We're happy with an electric how, how many times have we sold a van, and then a few months down the line, they've come back, and they want to change it? Not many, because we advise people, yeah. and explain to people, we and understand what yeah. they want yeah. the van for, so oh, we don't we... try and sell them... Uh, or they come with a van that they bought from yeah. somewhere else, and they come to us because they've seen, seen a van that we've got because the whole point of us Kev at the end of the day is to find out what they want to use the van for and yeah. then therefore we can then guide them to the right they can buy whatever van they want it's yeah. up to them we're a motor home re rehoming centre <laughs> <laughs> you've got a cat rehoming dog rehoming we rehome motor homes. and at one point we were breeding Volkswagens <laughs> weren't we <laughs> we're coming out of our ears didn't we <laughs> So that's our day. We're going to click on, get a couple of reviews done. We're going to try and do three today, Kev. And then when you've gone, I'm going to carry on with me a Darmo. We've got a lovely spring day, is it? Lovely, isn't it? Yeah. It's lovely. And I even <laughs> braved it. I didn't yeah. put a jumper on. It was like monsoon at Donington Park on Sunday. Right, so we'll get going. We'll see you in a bit. And come on, Kev, let's go. Right. Why did you look upset for? Upset? Yeah. I'm not upset. You should be excited. Friday, more like Friday. Um... Friday. <laughs> End of the week. It's a bit cold, isn't it? It's cold. We had a couple of lovely days and now it's gone cold. You got your jacket today? Yep. But I was brave. I did hear. I did hear you were brave. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. It, it wants to rain, doesn't it? It really does. It wants to rain. We have had a smattering of rain. But anyway, there's the week. Um, everything's gone quite well this week. Hobby. Hobby is all done, but yeah. you've got to get into that. Yeah. And Adamo. Adamo, yeah. That's all done. You've got to get into that. Yeah, I've got a lot to do next week, then. You have, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. I haven't. Oh, got all the five things. <laughs> um, if you just see over there, we've had a few vans in, which I'll show you next week. Um, but there we go, it's, um, everything's gone to plan, hasn't it? What are you going to rate the week? We're going to rate the week. We've been quiet on sales this week, I won't lie. It's mm. been quiet. Um, it's cold though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. let's go for 7.7432. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's what we're going for, because the vans up with soles we're on top of. Um, we've got a Volkswagen, um, which has got to come back yeah, to yeah. be checked off. We've had all the mechanical done because we wanted a bit, a bit of mechanical done on that. So we'll have a look at that van next week as we check that is one that off. Going out, is it? That's sold. Yeah. yeah. So we need to get that one done. We've got a few vans that we've had in that we can show you next week as well. But other than that, today is just tying up loose ends, just having a potter. I call them potter days. Mm. And the reason why I call them potter days is, is you can just potter on, getting things done, but at the end of the day, you haven't stopped, but if you ask me what I've done, I'll go, I don't know. <laughs> but on that note, I'm waffling. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video, just a quick diary of what we do throughout the week. Um, and then we'll see you next week, and yeah. let's see what next week brings us. Oh, my God.